Hey! Okay, so today I'm going to be showing y'all how I did this sort of three-dimensional velvet snowflake candy cane nail. <laughs> um, I'm starting out with base coat. These are um, Opry tips. They're medium coffin natural and I applied them with some clear acrylic. I wanted to try that as a new method um, in comparison to applying them with a soft gel. So if you're interested in seeing how I did that, I can make a video on it. But um, I'm just going in with some base coat. This base coat is from Medusa. I really like it because it smooths out the surface of the nail really nicely. So base coat all the nails and then I did not I wasn't in frame for a lot of the first coat of that red color but I'll show you guys me applying the second coat this is a presto sheer sort of nude color I believe it's color 253 if I remember correctly but it's a pot of gel it's really nice and natural looking so I just did one coat of that because I wanted sort of a sheer natural looking base for the art that was gonna go on this nail. So I'm just applying that to the index finger and the pinky, one coat on each. The brush that I'm using, by the way, is a Light Elegance gel brush, and I think it's the oval shaped brush, like an oval number six. So once that's how I like it, I'm going to go in with my second coat of this red. It's called Belladonna. It's from the Gel Bottle Ink. It's a really nice, um, sort of like muted, mar not a maroon, more like a burgundy. It's not a true like Christmassy red, which I actually think looked really nice with the Velvet Cat Eye that I'm going to use on top of it because it just gave it a little bit more of an elegant look, I guess, if you will. So I'm just going in and doing a second coat to all of the fingers that have the red shade. I like to take my time, as you can see. Um, I think I had a fuzz on the nail there, but I like to take my time while I'm polishing. Um, it's a lot easier to take your time and polish well and get all to the side walls and to your cuticle rather than rushing and either leaving areas open or um, rushing and getting it in the cuticle because once you flood your cuticle at least in my experience it is really difficult to get that polish out <laughs> um, oftentimes if i flood the cuticle i have to wipe the whole nail off and start all over again which results in a loss of time a loss of product and frankly me just getting pretty frustrated so you'll see um, I'm taking my time start you know halfway up the nail uh, and do the bottom part first and then I work my way up into the cuticle and I sort of use the brush to push the polish back so that I get a nice clean edge down there um, by the cuticle as well so those are my tips on polishing if you want a more in-depth video on that have to make a video on that as well but um, it is something that takes practice I've gotten a lot better at it the longer that I have been doing my own nails so if your polish work is a little bit sloppy or it takes you a long time right now take heart <laughs> it does get better it does get easier and it does get faster So once I get it how I like it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cure the entire hand for 30 seconds in my LED lamp. So I use the Young Nails gel lamp in case anybody was wondering. I'm decanting some of that red because I intend to use it on the nude nails for that swirly candy cane art. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and apply my Cat Eye Magnet Gel. So this is, uh, I got this particular gel off of um, AliExpress, I want to say, quite a while ago, but you can find it loads of places now. A lot of people are carrying it, um, but it's just a silver cat eye polish. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply one coat of that, a pretty liberal coat, um, because I want to have enough pigment, enough cat eye pigment to create the design that I'm looking for. So not too thin, obviously not too thick, um, but a nice even coat. So once I do that, I'm gonna play with the magnet a little bit. It's gonna take me a minute to figure out 
what way I want to push the pigments so you'll see me kind of playing around with it and honestly if you don't know what you're doing with your magnet I usually don't either I just push it around and flip it and twist it until I get my intended effect and sometimes I find that I need to go back in with my brush to smooth out the pigments and sort of start over again um, that makes it a lot easier than trying to sometimes re-push the pigments if you don't know what side of the magnet you need to be using so don't be you know intimidated by the magnet don't be intimidated by the cat eye polish it does take some trial and error if you will to get the look that you're going for but once I got it all pushed to the middle where I wanted it I then flipped it around and you'll see me go in with the round side to create a bit of a swirl so I'm just being finicky here <laughs> struggling to figure out what it is that I'm trying to do and then you'll see me flip it around <coughs> excuse me I just love watching it light up on camera like that. So you see here, I flipped it around, I'm going in with the round end and I'm trying to create a little bit of a swirl on the nail on both sides. So I do the cuticle edge first and then I do the other edge pushing the pigment into a line and that's what gives it that swirl effect. Once you get it how you want it, go ahead and cure it right away. I do cat eye polish one fingernail at a time. I'm pretty sure that's the way that everyone recommends to do it because if you try to um, do one nail, magnetize it, and then wait to cure it while you do another nail, the magnet is going to affect how it looks on the nail that you did previously. So one nail at a time, flash cure it. You don't have to do the full 30 seconds. You can do eight, 10 seconds in your lamp and then move on with your next nail and it'll get a, feel, it'll get a full cure as you're going through um, your set. So here, doing the same thing again, trying to find the right vibe for what I'm looking for. I tend to have better success on the far side when I flip my finger toward myself because I can pull the magnet towards me and see what I'm doing. That just is what works for me. So um, once I get it how I want it, again, flipping it around and using the round edge to create the little swirl effect. My thumbs are really large, so it took me a minute to get the the, the cuticle area um, how I wanted it because the magnet is a little bit small. So you can see me sort of fidgeting with it because I do have a bit of a larger thumb, but I got it in the end. I got it as good as it was going to get, but yeah, that's why I'm playing around with it so much. So it's time for the swirls. So I went ahead and again, I'm using that Belladonna color from the gel bottle ink and I'm using a liner brush. This particular liner brush is from Nails by Dev. Um, she has a really good collection of brushes out now. She's got a smudger brush, an ombre brush. She's got all kinds of stuff. And obviously she's the one of the queens of hand painted art. So if you're looking for a good brush, um, hers are pretty nice. So I'm using that to just create this swirl effect. I'm going to do a couple of thicker lines and then in between those lines, I'll go in with a thinner line, just a little bit less product, a little bit less pressure to create the thinner line than when I'm trying to spread the brush bristles out and create a bit of a thicker line. So obviously play around with the pressure, play around with how you use your tools because you'll find that with one tool you can get a lot of different effects. And if you're struggling with thin lines, um, these I admit are not the thinnest. They could definitely be better and I, you can trim your brush if you want it thinner. Also use less pressure if you want it thinner and take your time, you don't need to rush through it. Sometimes I find it best to just hold my breath and, and hurry up and get the line done with because that helps me keep it a little bit more steady, but you'll find your flow um, the longer that you practice. So I'm just going in with a couple more lines here and then we're going to go ahead and cure that up. Also, you can see my swirls go in the same sort of direction as the cat eye polish. So that was definitely intentional. I'm sitting here as I'm recording this voiceover, 
drinking a little bit of eggnog. Um, hopefully you all are in the spirit, whatever you celebrate in the winter time. Hopefully it is the season so far is treating you well. I know there are a lot of emotions that come with the end of the year. Um, and hopefully you are choosing to focus on the blessings and the positives that you've experienced this year. I know that that is definitely my perspective right now. Um, so I'm definitely ex um, expressing some of my Christmas cheer through my nail art. Um, it does get me a lot of compliments and not that I'm necessarily wanting the compliments, but I think it's nice for other people to see the Christmas or the holiday spirit in others. So I really like that when I get a compliment on my Christmas nails because it, it makes me feel like I'm passing on a little bit of Christmas joy each time. So I'm going in with that same cat eye polish and I'm going over those stripes. So I'm retracing the stripes so that I can give the same magnetized cat eye velvet effect um, that I have on the other two nails. So you'll see it kind of light up here. I do the same thing on the pinky and I get, I get that cured right away. I'd be really curious to know what y'all are doing for the holidays. If you're staying home, if you're traveling, if you're traveling abroad, if somebody's going somewhere super interesting, please drop it in the comments below because I want to live vicariously through you on your trip. I'm going to Texas to visit my family and I'm really excited because I'm going to get to see my nephews and I love them dearly, but I really was hoping that I'd be in Aruba or something for Christmas this year and it did not work out that way. So we're just going to have to look ahead to the next opportunity to travel. I ultimately decided to add some snowflakes and in the interest of time, it was very, very late while I was recording this and I was ready to go to bed, um, I chose to stamp them. So instead of hand painting them, I went ahead and stamped them. If you have ever stamped on camera or stamped in, at all in general, you know that you've really got to see, be able to see what you're doing. So I'm sorry that everything is not perfectly in view. That was like the only stamp that I got in the viewfinder <laughs> um, in frame. So I apologize for that. but. Um, I'm happy to explain more about the stamping process if you have questions, but I wanted to just get these on here really quick. The plate, the stamping plate and that sticky pad are from Maniology and my stamper and my stamping polish are from Clear Jelly Stamper. So if you're looking for stamping products, those are two companies that when I first started doing nail art, I bought a ton of supplies from them and I don't use stamping stuff as much anymore. I really should because it makes it so easy and everything looks so crisp and neat. But um, those are two companies that if you're starting with stamping, I would recommend looking at some of their products because they're just really quality products. They give you a lot of flexibility with your designs. Clear Jelly Stamper has layered stamps. This actually also was a layered stamping plate from Maniology. I didn't layer them, but you certainly could. And then once that was all finished, I decided what the heck Let's put a couple crystals on top. So I went ahead and added some clear um, crystals to the centers of a few of my snowflakes. And so lately I have been using the Zule's um, crystal glue. I don't remember what it's called, but it's really awesome. So you'll see me go in with that after I top coat here. Always top coat before you put your crystals on. Um, when I use the Zule's, when I use Zule's glue, uh, typically I like to use it over a matte top coat. It dries just a little bit faster than if I want it to be glossy, I'll go over it with gloss after the fact. But in this scenario, like I said, I was trying to hurry up and get this finished with. So I just went ahead and did it on top of the gloss and the crystals, you got to keep an eye on them because they will slide a little bit on, on the glue on top of a glossy top coat more so than they will on a matte top coat. On a matte top coat, they sort of stick right away which is good if you know exactly what you're doing with your crystal placement. It's not good if you're unsure and you want to have the flexibility to move some things around. So if you want to move your crystals around, you're still working on your placement, I would recommend going on top of a glossy top coat. Um, and finding a top coat that works with stamping polish is going to be a little bit of a journey, or at least it was for me. Um, I tried a bunch of different things and sometimes your top coats will pit 
like you'll get um, some separation on top of your stamping polish. And that's just because the two products don't necessarily interact well together. It doesn't mean that your top coat is bad. It doesn't mean that your stamping polish is bad. It just means that those two products don't have a great relationship. So here I'm using the um, Medusa Nails No Wipe Top Coat and it worked beautifully on top of the stamping. I had no issues whatsoever. So I used the Medusa Base and the Medusa Top Coat. And then as I mentioned before, I'm going in with a little bit of glue, um, crystal glue in the center of each snowflake. I tried to, I didn't really apply crystals on the ones that were on the sides because they're gonna catch on things and fall off. Usually I try to keep my crystals to the center of the nail, but here you'll see me apply a few crystals. Um, these are just crystal clear and I thought they really just finished, finished the look off nicely. If you've made it this far, clearly you like this look, or clearly this video is providing some sort of value to you, so definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps me know what kind of content to make. It helps push this information to the algorithm so we can grow our little DIY nail family. Um, people who are trying to learn, people who are trying to grow, people who maybe are trying to save money while you do it. Um, and express your creativity. For me, that was the whole start of doing my nails, was finding a way to be creative, I was stuck in the house during COVID and so I wanted to, um, you know, do some nails and have my, have my hands look nice. So if you are on that journey or you're in that community, definitely subscribe to this channel. I will have loads more content coming for you all in the new year, but the year's not over. We got more Christmas stuff coming up. So once those crystals dry, I went ahead and just did a little bit of nail care. Make sure you're using your cuticle oil. That's super duper important um, because you don't want your cuticles to dry out, especially in this winter weather. The cuticle oil that I'm using is the rose oil from Young Nails. It I don't really love the smell of rose, but <laughs> I, it came with one of my orders, and so I'm gonna use it up, trust me. It does feel really nice. I believe it's got some vitamin E in it as well, which is great for the skin barrier. So I find that when I use it, I don't have a ton of hangnails, I don't have bad cuticles. Um, definitely would recommend, obviously, putting on some cuticle oil every day if you can remember to do that. Maybe do it while you're brushing your teeth or do it at night when you get ready for bed so that you can remember. Um, but definitely a couple times a week is really helpful for the health of your skin around your nails and also the health of your nail matrix and your nail plate and all of those things. So once we get that dry crustiness out, I cleaned up with a little bit of acetone because I had some stamping polish places, so that's why my fingers look so ashy. <laughs> uh, but once we get that taken care of, we're going to put some lotion on and I will show you all, um, I'll be back with the finished results. <laughs> 